So if you just tuned in, we're partway through doing an alternator upgrade in our Isuzu 4JX1 or Jackaroo or Bighorn 4x4 and this is the old alternator which I've just taken out and that is a 70 amp alternator and we're upgrading it to a 90 amp alternator which I've managed to partly mount in there but before we go too far I'll just take you through what it actually takes to get that far down into the engine bay to actually swap the alternator out. First things first, remove your battery and then once your battery's out take off your air intake onto the turbo which plugs in down here. So get rid of that sucker and once you've got the battery out and the air intake off you can then remove the air conditioning compressor this guy here and that's normally mounted onto the four bolts down here four mounting points one two three four is mounted onto those and then because you've got no battery you can flip the air compressor up onto the battery tray and that will keep it clear before you can get that air compressor out, it goes without saying, you need to remove your belts, all three of them. The one that runs around here runs onto the air compressor, and then you've got two others down there which run onto the alternator. So first take off the air compressor belt by loosening the nut on the front of the pulley here, and then that'll allow you to unwind this and drop this pulley down, and you can take off the first belt. Then, on the old alternator, loosen off the nut on the top here, and you may have to loosen off a nut underneath, the bolt underneath, which is a little bit tricky to get at, 14mm, and that will allow this to move back and forth. Push your alternator into the side, and that will slacken the belts off enough to get them off. Done. So, it makes it a little bit easier if you don't have a cowling around your fan. It just gives you more room to work with. So mine's gone can cause a bit of overheating if you don't watch it but it's more benefits not having it especially when you get mud in the radiator easier to clean so when you go to take out this old alternator your 70 amp there are two plugs on that there's the main feed which goes off to the batteries that's a 10 mil and then you've got your standard plug in the back here which need to be disconnected and there's a bolt a big long bolt that goes through underneath 14 millimeter bolt on this end, nut on the back. Quite tricky to get at, but you will get there eventually. And then there's a 12 mil up on the top there. Now once all that's unplugged, this is the old loom for the old alternator, which is laying on the ground out here. And that's your main charge feed, which goes onto the back here. And that guy plugs in there. But it doesn't actually do that because this is a 90 amp alternator, so we have to change out this plug with a new one. That looks like this one here. You can buy these from any good automotive specialist. And that plug is compatible with the new alternator, which plugs in there, because the old plug is not. And that's the difference between the 70 and the 90 amp alternator. So the 70 amp alternator plug is on the right, and the 90 amp is on the left there. So I will have to cut this old plug off and wire in the new one once I figure out which way around the wires go. Another change you need to make to the loom is the main charge cable that runs off to the battery. So this is where all the current is delivered, current and volts gets delivered to your battery to charge it. This is a 6mm eyelet on here, it's too small for the new alternator, it does not fit. You actually need an 8mm eyelet, so we have to cut this one off and replace it with this one here. Now you can crimp these, but I'm going to solder it, because soldering is better, because it doesn't corrode or get contaminants in the cluster of wires. So that'll need doing too. The other thing that needs changing is your belt lengths. Your original belts are going to be too short because the new alternator is much wider in diameter and when it's 
pushed right in against the side of the block. It hits on. This is the bottom radiator hose outlet from the bottom of the block. It knocks on that and stops it going in enough to get the original belts over the end of the pulley. So you need longer pulley belts, which are listed um, in the parts catalogue for these. So you need this part number here, 11A1005, and the 1005 is actually the length. The original belt used with 70 alt, 70 amp alternator is this one here, an 11A0980, a 980 millimeter length belt, a wee bit short. So that extra 25 millimeters gives you enough length to get your new belt round the end of the pulley because the pulley on these 90 amp alternators is larger as well by about an extra 10 millimeters in diameter I think. So the 70 amp alternator was used on the 4JX1 engines and the Isuzu trucks up until about the 9th month 1999 and then after that they went to the larger 90 amp so that's why I'm doing an upgrade now because the 70 amp has never been a startling performer and I could never really keep up with the charging in the vehicle so who knows maybe that's why Isuzu or General Motors upgraded to the bigger alternator later on because they realized it wasn't quite grunty enough for these trucks Especially once you've got all the accessories turned on. Okay, so that's the rundown on the dirty old 4JX1 engine alternator upgrade. So I'm going to go away now and do a whole lot of work. And then come back and show you those bits. And then hopefully finish it off.